Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sally Curcio. I'm the Associate Director at Hampton Gallery. Hampton Gallery is a program of the Fine Arts Center located in Southwest residential area at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Hampton Gallery exhibits art from both well-established and emerging artists working in all disciplines. It has established a reputation as a launching pad for experimental and thought-provoking work. Today, we're happy to have Jillian Jones here with us to discuss her online exhibition for Hampton Gallery, Becoming a Parent to My Mom. The exhibition is curated from hundreds of photos. It documents the time during which she was a caregiver to her mother who suffered from dementia for nearly five years before her death in May, 2021. It is an effort to shine light on the topics of aging, caregiving, and death. Jillian Jones has been a staff photographer, news writer, and columnist for the Berkshire Eagle since 2014. She began her career at the North Adams Transcript in 1992. She has been an adjunct professor teaching photography and journalism at the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts since 2001. In addition to her daily photographs in the Berkshire Eagle, she is a regular contributor to the Associated Press Wire Service. She illustrated B is for Berkshires, published by Island Port Press, and won the Photo Portrait Award from the New England Newspaper and Press Association. Welcome, Jillian. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so humble. <laughs> Goosebumps here. <laughs> Thank you all so much for, for um, attending. I'm, I'm just really excited about being able to talk about this, um, this uh, exhibit, which documented a very difficult time in my life. And um, if they say that art is a receipt for pain, then this is definitely um, a part of that. <laughs> so um, I guess I wanted to sort of maybe start by talking about how this all came about. And, you know, a lot of people photograph things in their life, they photograph their friends, their pets and whatnot. And to photograph something so intimate and share it ultimately with, with people has been a real honor and privilege. Um, it's also been somewhat cathartic <laughs> and to be able to share that with people and to get feedback from them whether you know it's primarily you know for me an article in the newspaper, a column that I've written, um, is um, it just you know makes makes me feel really really good um, to shed a light on caregiving and just how difficult it can be and how lonely it can be, um, and I continue to get a lot of feedback from people and it's it's just really. Um, been great. And it's helped me really to, you know, deal with my grief as well. Um, May is the two year anniversary of my mom's death and being able to um, share this with people has just been, it's just been really helpful. But as for how it started, I, I think I just started, I didn't know what else to do. You know, they, they also say that, um, you know, combat photographers have often said that the camera sort of creates a barrier between you and what's going on. And that's probably one of the reasons why they cope. And I have found that also as a journalist in the Berkshires, you know, when I'm having to photograph things that are painful um, to see, the camera kind of helps to, to sort of distance me a little bit from what's going on. So I think in this way that may have, have done it, that might've been the same thing with taking pictures of my mom um, at various stages. I think the other thing too is, um, you know, I, I have a brother who um, is in California and I think I also wanted to sort of share some of what was going on with him as well. So that's kind of how I, um, how I, how this all sort of began. Um, and as for the, the photos themselves, I wanted to kind of take some time, oh boy, <laughs> already having issues here. Let's see, with explaining maybe some of the images um, and what um, kind of what, there we go. Can everybody see my screen okay? Oh. Yeah, you have to complete the share. Oh. So you click share screen and okay. then um, oh and then there's one more button. Um, gosh, I did this so effortlessly before. 
Um, boy. It's like having people watch you type. It's okay. I know. I know. Seriously. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's okay. Bottom of the screen, there's a green button that says share screen. So you're going to click that. And then the screen that comes up from there, you're going to choose the top left one, which is screen and the blue button on the bottom right, which says share. Okay. Let me hang on here. Oh, okay. This is, oh boy. <laughs> we did it really well in rehearsal, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chrome, Zoom. Okay. And so view. Oh, I'm just going to, I'm in full screen. That's what I did. So, ah, so that you can do after you share the screen. Otherwise, there's no button me, for the screen yeah, sharing. Let me do that. I'll exit. Okay. Now, share. Okay. Now we can see. Now Thank you can go you. full screen if you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little nervous here, I guess. A <laughs> uh, performance anxiety. Okay, so um, I kind of went ahead of myself here. So I literally, um, you know, like Sally said in the intro, went through hundreds, if not more, photos of. Um, pictures I had taken of my mom, all of which were taken with a cell phone. And to curate this exhibit, I tried to think about um, photos that showed her evolution, I guess, or in this case, de-evolution. Um, you know, this, this image here is, is very early on. And, you know, she's She's still pretty much with it. She's in her living room, or excuse me, her kitchen. You know, she's very comfortable and kind of looking at me like, hey, Jillian, you know, what, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and, you know, she's, she's got her tea and looking at her magazine and she's wearing a, uh, you know, a, a, I guess a kimono that she sewed herself. She was very big into sewing. And like I said, this is just her, you know, sort of like before, um, before everything. Um, this image here, you know, she's walking around, she's got her cane um, standing at her front door looking out, which kind of, you know, sort of looking out on the world from her small part of the world that, you know, I think at this point she wasn't able to drive anymore. So her home was really where she spent um, a lot of her time. This is a picture of her with within a month of her being admitted to the nursing home. And, you know, the, just the, the sort of look on her face, the kind of, I don't know, it's almost like a blank sort of stare. You know, we've got the, the iPad here with the music, the, um, the water with the straw. She always hated the straws. You know, she would always insist on taking it out when she drank her water. I wanted to intersperse quotes with um, with the, the photos, I thought that was kind of an important thing to do. And this quote by Rosalind Carter, I think really um, said it all, that at some point or other, we're all gonna be impacted with caregiving. This one is a photo of her that I took. I, I visited her a lot. And, you know, in the nursing home, she, um, you know, it was, it was just so hard, <laughs> just so hard. I visit her every, every day that I could, um, you know, this is lunchtime. You can see by the clock, the, the meal that she hasn't eaten, um, and probably won't eat because she was a vegan and trying to get that dietary, um, just trying to get her food that she could eat was really, really hard. Um, the other thing about this photo, you know, she's sleeping, but the, it's sort of like a foreshadowing. To me, um, I she kind of I mean I'll I'll just say it bluntly she kind of looks dead so you know um, I just feel like it's such a you know like more really just a foreshadowing of kind of what was to come um, and one of the best things about the nursing home was being able to bring her pets to visit her and you know we grew up with cats she had cats this particular cat was called Braddy and you know the smile on her face when she had her pets there was just beyond anything. 
um, you can imagine. It just was so, to, to, and to capture this particular moment was really, um, was really great. If, when you have your parents or people that you love in a nursing home, you got to put labels on everything <laughs> because everything gets laundered together. And, you know, so putting the label on was, was really kind of necessary. And um, so that's kind of what, what that is. You know, this image, I'm kind of looking down upon her and she's sort of looking up at me. It is uh, just sort of showing her vulnerability at this point, um, you know, and she had been there, you know, for a few months at this point. The porch at the nursing home was probably one of the best um, things about this particular nursing home and getting her outside as often as possible. And the cup of tea, I mean, she, that, was, that was her thing. Tea was, was like a, a cure for, for anything. A cup of tea just solves all problems. And, you know, bringing her her tea and sitting outside and visiting with her, which I did often was very important. Visiting her, you know, in between assignments. This particular day, I probably was at Mass Mocha <laughs> before I came to see her. And, you know, watching TV um, in the in the common room there. Again, I visit her quite a lot. And in this case, you know, the angle of view from where I'm sitting and she's sitting lying in her bed. And then this one, the next photo is kind of a, a contrast with she was sitting in the chair and I sat on the bed. One of the things about this photo is that's that to me is is just so um, unnerving is just how anxious she looks. When she's sitting there, you can sort of tell the look on her face and the way her hands are just, you know, and, and you can see we did our best to sort of make the, the room hers by hanging up photos and some of her sister's paintings, you know, on the bulletin board, we love you, mom, you know, phone numbers and, and little things like that. Um, she never really wanted to use her walker, <laughs> despite the sign. And of course, here she is using it more of a, as a footrest than anything else as we sat outside on the porch, um, getting her hair done, which was kind of important. Um, and the, the woman who did the, the um, who was the beautician there was just really great. Um, but it's just so funny here because she's sort of doing her hair and she's kind of like making these little devil horns on top of her head, which are kind of funny. So, you know, the humor of it as well, you know, just kind of, there's there's always humor to be found in, in in all situations, um, you know, and, and here she's trying on glasses. My um, brother really wanted to make sure that she could have her glasses and her hearing aids. Hearing aids, she didn't want to wear them. Glasses got lost. So, you know, it's, it's just, it was one of those things that you just kind of just had to, oh, I think I skipped one, here we go. And then finally, oops, yeah, I think we, here we go. Sorry, I got a little lost there. Um, here, you know, doctor's visit, you can sort of see her angst, um, pretty apparent. Again, the angle looking down, she's holding her head. And then finally leaving the nursing home. And at this point I had secured a caregiver to live with her at her house and she's home, she's happy. The caregiver didn't work out exactly. Uh, <laughs> So, but you know, and here are some flowers that my brother sent uh, every occasion he was uh, sending flowers. So they were always, you know, that was always an important part of his, um, his acknowledgement. And of course, home is where your mom is. Um, any moments of joy that I could capture, I, I tried to do that. You know, even to share with my brother and say, yep, you know, she, because he say, did she get outside today? It's a beautiful day where you are. Yep, she did, you know. Um, and then of course, this contrast here, again, with the tea, you know, kind of giving me that look like, oh, because this is of course in the nursing home. And, you know, just, I think the look kind of says it all. She's sort of fed up with everything. Many visits to the ER um, over the course of our caregiving journey. And just to count, to count too many to, to, med, to count really. This photo I found just thought was really 
kind of powerful because I know my mom would often say, and, and people often, older people will say, they look at themselves in the mirror and they don't recognize themselves. And, you know, I think that is certainly the case here. Um, you know, the mirror is a little bit distorted. And I think, you know, how she appears is probably like, she's like, who is this person? You know, I don't know who that is. I think this pretty much says it all. Um, mourning someone who's still alive. It's, I have to say that is definitely what it felt like. When she was um, at home, whether it was with me or her own, or her own home, we relied on our caregivers. Um, it was like, it took a village. And this is Marty, one of our, our caregivers who um, we just, she was a great support to both my mom and to my, and, and me. Um, this is a pre-pandemic photo. Um, and once again, trying to find the humor, <laughs> putting, painting, you know, a face on the uh, mask, just sort of showing where I was at at this point. Um, trips to the dentist's office. She was remarkably good in the dentist chair. She had a lot of work done on her teeth as a, as a young woman. So I think that she was, you know, the that dental hygienist said that she was, she behaved really well, which isn't always the case, you know. Um, this photo now, if you think about the one in the beginning where she's standing at the door, I think it shows a real contrast here because she's in the chair, the wheelchair, and you know, she's sitting in front of the, the door. Um, but I, what I loved about this was she had just gotten her hair cut and she had the shawl on because she was always cold. And I feel like the, the fringe and the texture in the shawl and with her hair, it just is just a great combination in terms of, you know, an image. Um, being in the nursing home in between procedures or illnesses meant rehab. And as you can see, she's doing it, but not really enjoying it. Um, again, cats were such an important part of our lives. And we had a lot of pet death over the five years. So one of our caregivers gave us a kitten and this is one of those cats um, and who's, you know, just there with my mom, just sitting there with her. And it just brought her so much joy. Um, it made us both laugh, you know, this is one of our other cats, Pippa, who, um, you know, and just, it was just, I don't know, just was really, really great to be able to, to share. Um, have that be able to have pets you know uh one of her procedures you know in the in the uh in the the room before she got wheeled in and then this photo was one of the probably the the photo one of the last photos i took of her at home um and i just you know you can see sort of the deterioration um you know her skin tone i honestly think at this point she was already dying and, you know, this is a plate. She took the plate, you know, she, she ate her food and then she just did this weird thing. And I, I just took a picture. I don't even, I don't know why I did it, you know? Um, and then from there, you know, she was hospitalized and then she was um, discharged to the nursing home. And, um, and then that is ultimately where, where she passed away. Um, again, the, the flower theme here, um, for my brother, hope you're feeling better soon. Of course she was on hospice, you know, and, um, from there it kind of, you know, went, um, and I, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, I just was taking pictures. I just didn't know what else to do. And, and here is a, a photo album that I brought. And I kind of just wanted people to know who she was, you know, she was a person. And even at various times where she resided in a nursing home, I would bring a book of photos and show them. And I mean, she was a beautiful, beautiful young woman. I mean, she, she was a dancer. Um, she could have been a model. She was in the New York City in the 60s and every photographer wanted to take her photo. She was working on a portfolio. I think she really, could have been a model, but what she told me was that she was too short. 
<laughs> so she couldn't do that. But I, you know, here's an image of her and I just wanted to sort of show the contrast. Um, and then finally, um, after she passed, I, I just found myself creating this, this, um, this image, I, a still life in a sense, using the flowers that my brother had sent. It, 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 by the time you know, it was all said and done, I think he had sent two vases of, of photo, uh, photos of um, flowers for her. And you know, I, I came up with this image and um, apparently the hospice, I was talking to someone later, they said, a lot of people do this. They, they'll take a photo like this after their loved one has passed. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, almost two years after her death, I have to say that I have no regrets. It's the hardest thing I ever did. And, but it was so worth it. I grew as a person and, um, I have so many people to thank for getting me through that really difficult time. Um, as I was looking through her, her, her things after her death, I found this, it was in her handwriting. Um, and I just, it just brought me such comfort. And even more so at her funeral, her, um, the priest who actually was filling in for the priest that is normally at this church now is retired, Father Seer. He knew my mom, he knew her sister, and the fact that, you know, he was able to conduct her funeral um, mass was just, I, I mean, I, it just was amazing. <laughs> it, could have, it could have been more perfect um, just because he was able to speak about her in a way that, you know, was, was genuine and um, also heartfelt. <laughs> so, and then, you know, you hear even at the, um, at the graveside, I just found myself continuing to, to just take pictures. I just kind of wasn't sure what else to do. I, once again, I think I was maybe thinking that I would share it with, with family and friends. Um, and then finally, this is the last image. And I don't know, I, it's a picture that I took of my mom sleeping. I, I did that a lot. I even did that when, when, um, when I was a kid and I got my first camera. I took pictures of her. I took a picture of her sleeping. And she was sitting there with her mouth open. It wasn't particularly, uh, um, I guess, <laughs> didn't make her look too good. But flattering is a word. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that's um, that's that's it. Um, I would love to take your questions um, about anything. I'm very, um, I feel like I'm very transparent. I, my mom always said I, I wore my heart on my sleeve and I kind of feel like I'm doing that with this exhibit too. Um, to be able to share this is probably, um, it's just a real gift. So um, I'd love to uh, take any questions or, Comments, um, I guess we can start with that. No questions? <laughs> I know, I'm reflecting, I'm reflecting on all of it because- no, Yeah, some, reflect, yeah, go ahead, Sal. Yeah, oh, just um, the photos, like certain photos, um, just the colors, like just the visual effects of like, even the one in the door right there, the, the yellow and the blue and, the pops of color that you pick up. And I was just thinking of how you were saying, it's like, you know, to take that photo kind of creates that barrier, but yeah. it's also like, right. It's going into that creative place that you're also being super observant and present at the same time, which is interesting that. Well, you know, it's dichotomy. funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, people always say like when they go on vacation, you know, Oh, you're always taking pictures. Why don't you stop and, you know, enjoy the scenery? And I think for me, maybe stopping and taking a picture, you know, would sort of give me a chance to kind of like just get out of the, the space for a minute and just sort of take a picture and kind of remove myself somehow. And maybe that's how I was able to, to do this. I, I, you know, creating that barrier. Um, 
Yeah, I guess okay. I'm, I guess what I yeah I'm, I'm saying it's a removal, but it's also super observant because you're dealing with composition and right. So it goes to that barrier yes. is the artistic experience, but it's like, right it's like visual. And then being a photojournalist, like you're used to capturing people's emotions in these really charged times, and so. How does that play into that too, into this, like capturing, like capturing these moments of your mother, do you feel, what are the feelings that come up? Well, capture? you know, when I was actually curating this show, I mean, I was looking through all these photos and, and afterwards I was like, wow, I'm exhausted, <laughs> like <laughs> mentally exhausted. And, um, I was like, wow, this is, this is really kind of hard you know I think you know as a as a journalist too you know I constantly having to photograph people in in very difficult um times you know sometimes at their best and sometimes at their worst so I kind of feel like I wanted to sort of share a difficult time in my life because you know so many people say oh well journalists you know they're they're just out there preying on other people and capturing their misery and and uh, I just didn't want people to think that I couldn't also show a part of myself during a difficult time in my life. Um, so, yeah, I guess maybe that's, you know, I mean, like I said, it's just really about sharing a common humanity, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I know I, I often wonder like, what would my mom think about this? And um, I, I think she'd probably be like, oh, Jillian, you know, what, why, why did you do that? You know, but I mean, she, like I said, we, I grew up looking at photos of her. Um, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I think I wrote a column about being the, um, you know, the, the keeper of all the family photos from the time she was like a little kid. Um, and I, so I feel like I've, kind of completed that 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 photographic journey um, from you know her childhood to her death. Um, you know, and I guess that's just part of the storytelling that I, I just generally do all the time. <laughs> so um, and she was she, I mean I've said it before in my columns, she was a great mom. She was a single mom. This is a a testament to her. Um, I Everything I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my mom. And so I think this is, this sort of is, is for her. Um, let's see if I'll stop the share here and see if there's any other, um, any questions. So, well, I, I wanna thank you all for, for coming and, and encourage you to um, sign the guest book and keep in touch. I am always happy to, to chat with people or to email. Um, and if you, if you think of something afterwards that you wanna ask, um, please, please do. There's a question in the chat. There is. I'm gonna just read it out loud so that okay. it's on the recording. Yeah, is there any conflict with recording oh. her experience objectively and your personal attachment? Hmm. Well, you know, um, objectivity, I, 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 you know, as journalists, we try to be object, objective, but I think objectivity is kind of a myth <laughs> um, because, you know, you, everybody's different in how they perceive the world. So, um we perceive the world based on our experiences it's like someone looking at an accident and there's six people there and everybody saw something different um i think yeah i i got her at different times you know as you could see from the photos there were times where she was happy there's times she was frustrated i got her being vulnerable um i don't think i necessarily protected her or spared her. I think I just photographed what I saw. Um, does that answer your question there, um, mm -hmm. Dan? 
You're muted. Oh, you're, I think you're muted, honey. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, it does definitely. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. So, yeah. so people who don't know, Dan is actually my fiance, mm -hmm. and I, if I have anybody to thank, it's him because uh, he really. I mean, you know, he he had to deal with a lot when I was taking care of my mom. Um, my mom had a, a nickname for him. Um, <laughs> She called him Baldy. Baldy. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and you know, it was just uh and it was, it, it, was, it, it was a pleasure it seeing was, you with, with your mom. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. She was she it was and, and you were real he was really supportive during this time. Um it was a very difficult time. I don't know how many men would have put up with a lot of that stuff, you know. Um the nights that I had to to sleep at her place um you know because i was taking care of her and he stayed at my place i mean you know it's uh but it was and it was also it was all good it was all good it's also really important to have a a network of friends and family um i can't say i had a lot of family support but um i did have a lot of support from from friends at the same time it was really hard to talk to them about this because you know unless you've gone through it no one, you know, it's, it's like, you don't, you don't want to share all the, all the bad stuff. And I guess that's another thing too. Maybe what this exhibit is, is an opportunity to share with people. Okay. Now it's over. This is what it was like, <laughs> you know, draw your own conclusions. Um, so. Yeah, it's something, it's a reality. Many of us are going to experience and right. Yeah. yeah. And you know, already, absolutely. And, and it's, yeah, you are shedding light on it by having this ex exhibition and all the different stages and yeah. experiences that are difficult yet sweet yes. and touching at the same mm -hmm. time. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that chapter is behind me. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Someone raising her hand or? Yeah. Oh, with their oh. hand up. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to, well, I, I want to echo what so many in the chat has, have said about how moving this is. And I think, I, I don't, I can't speak for everyone else, but I think it, it took me a while to even find words because you know, I think we all know that it's coming, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you haven't right. gone through it yet. Um, and so just, and the, the sort of intimacy of the exhibition is just, it's really so moving because I think so many of us, particularly now in this social media environment where what's usually caught in the frame of the camera is either the highly curated sort of beautiful life or the extraordinarily dramatic, like once in a lifetime, tra you know, traumatic event, mm -hmm. but it's the, the sort of the quiet um, dignity of, you know, sort of an everyday, sadly, I mean, obviously it was a significant period for you and your mother and your brother, but um, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a piece of life that we often see. And so I did actually notice something and I, and I, and I don't know if it's intentional or unintentional, and I don't mean to gender this, um, exhibition if that wasn't the intent but what I, what I know is what I saw is that you really didn't see men show up in any of the pictures until the funeral and so mm -hmm. like the care um, the caregivers the mm -hmm. the you know the the I guess the nurse's aide that you brought in the the hairdresser it was a sort of this quiet world of women that's um, right. oh, that's often great we don't often get an opportunity to talk about or spotlight and i just wanted to know uh if it was an intentional sort of story it wasn't it okay <laughs> yeah no it wasn't intentional and yeah i mean i was i was surrounded by a lot of women a lot of women caregivers um you know in the hospital women nurses yeah i you know i hadn't even thought of that that's such, you know, a yeah. great observation. It was completely, 
um, unintentional, subconscious maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm. I was sensitive to it because I, I'm. I'm. A, I have a four year old, and I run with this crew of moms, and there are not a lot of men in our pictures either. <laughs> and that because they don't exist. It's just mm -hmm. in the caretaking right process well, yeah just show I, more. I do want to say that i know that there are men who are caregivers um mm -hmm. and i've had people who've read my columns email me about that people in public come up to me and, and say that they were a caregiver um so i know that there are men caregivers out there there um, are fewer though there are probably there may be fewer based on, based on my experience but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just don't want to leave out, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I, I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, definitely there are, there are, there mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely something that women more or less have to sort of, you know, just like with childbearing, it's, it's more the norm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. <laughs> Was your mom aware of um sort of what was happening like going to the hospital or to the nursing home or back to home or that she was in hospice like you know that's a good question Lainey and I I have to say um I'm not sure I'm not sure what she was aware of um you know it, it kind of got to the point where um you know it, it, sundowning is really hard with dementia I'd get home from work because I usually work later. And, and she, at this point, she was like in her own home. And I'd get there and she'd, you know, have something to say about the caregiver. Maybe they were trying to kill her or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. it was really sad. And then she'd say, well, I have to go home now. And I said, well, um, I, and I, at, at some point, I, ha I think I stopped calling her mom because I would say, mom, mom, nothing. And I'd say, Rita, what? She answered to her <laughs> own name. And, um, you know, she said, well, I have to go home now. And I'd be like, well, you are home. She goes, no, I, I my mom's expecting me, you know, but I mean, that was called fiblets and stuff. And um, I remember, I, you know, I, I would say, well, um, let me, let me give her a call. So I'd pick up the phone and I'd say, oh, hey, Ellen. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's Jillian. I'm here with Rita. Can she spend the night? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Um, and it just little stuff like that, but, you know, at the, at the very end, um, you know, as she was, she was, you know, and when she was dying, I could, I, she held my hand, I, you know, at the very, very end, I couldn't feel, but like, I think she knew I was there. I think she knew who I was. And even if she didn't, I think she knew that I was family. Um, but like dementia is so hard. It's just so hard. They're just, they're in and out of, you know, like I said, I, I think I wrote about, they're like time travelers. <laughs> You know, I mean, I think she always knew who she was, but I'll never forget having uh, a VNA um, nurse come and I was kind of listening because her house is very small. So, it was, you know, you can't you hear, every, you hear everything. And he said, you know, can I ask you your name, your birth date, and how old are you? And she said, 13. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, wow. She thinks she's 13 years old. I mean, it was just heartbreaking, you know. Um, but uh, and yeah. out of all years to relive, I don't think I would choose thirteen. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> you know, it's funny too because when I was thirteen, she's um, she's kind of I, I guess when I yeah she was fifty when I was thirteen because there's a thirty-seven year age difference. So as I was becoming a woman she was um entering menopause <laughs> so you could we were just like at each other's uh, oh it was tough I, I, she hit me with a wooden spoon a few times <laughs> oh man different times different times but anyway she uh i'm lucky to have had her as a mom and i know not everybody can say that so i feel blessed so wow well, any other questions or I know we're getting, gosh, this is, this is longer than, than I was told it might be. But I'm, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a flow, there's a natural flow. A natural but, flow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh. Mm -hmm.
There's little comments in the chat. Um, many men are uh, curious. Yeah. yeah, there are many. Yeah. 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 Through thick and thin. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's. Ah. Visible. The elderly. Yes. Yeah, often become invisible. Yeah, thank you. Well, I just really feel blessed to be able to share this. And um, I hope, if anything, that it it just helps people feel less alone in their journey. Um, people keep telling me I need to do a book. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's something I might do at some point. I've got photos and I've got, you know, text to go with it. So mm -hmm. maybe try to find a publisher. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, but you know, maybe at some point it might be nice to do something like that. Because I know when I was in my caregiving journey, I was looking for books to read um, to, to just get a little perspective um, because that's very important. That, that perspective is really, really important. I think so. I mentioned this to you, Jillian, that um, certainly there are books on like narrative and memoir in terms of caring for a parent with dementia but i don't think there's been like a like a photo um exhibition of it and i mean that in sort of like the exhibition word yeah, you yeah. know what i mean like really exposing like the visual images that go along with the words about caretaking and death and and what that whole process meant to you i feel like with the pictures it makes it that much more powerful yeah, no, and it, and it is a really difficult to, uh, topic to discuss. <laughs> um, you know, it's not something we really want to think about. It's um, what it was the um, oh, Roz Chest had the book. Can we talk about something? What was it, Dan? Can you uh, can oh, we talk God, about I'm something to remember. a little more? Can we talk about something let me, else? Let me look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we talk about something else? You know, and, and you know, there's a lot of stuff I wish I had talked about with my mom. You know, I, I wish there were a lot of things that we had maybe put in order, you know, um, put things in order a little better. Having a will and everything is great, but. So Ross Chaz's book was, uh, can't we talk about something more pleasant? Yeah, there we go. Can't we talk? <laughs> yeah. And that, I mean, I, I got, Dan got me that book when she had the exhibit down at the Rockwell a few years back. And, you know, it's, it was all her illustrations about. Um, Taking care of her. Parents, care really. parents. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah so you know um and she definitely you know what she probably inspired me on some sub, subconscious level mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know to to do you know she did what she did and of course as a photographer and, and writer i wanted to do the same and um it was cathartic to do so <laughs> so i i did <laughs> anyone else yeah, yeah. We could do no, I mean, I know we could, I know, I know we got to stop, but um, I was just going to say, yeah, I'm just reflecting on conversations I've had with friends about their parents and conversations that should be happening, um, you know, because they're getting older and, you know, just financial, you know, health, what kind, you know, what are the plans? Yeah, yeah, kind of just planning for this moment. <laughs> right. It's not something so, I want to think about. I don't even want to think no, about it, you know? No. And I, you know, I, and I, but, you know. Very real, yeah. especially with baby boomers. Yeah. Getting well, that, I'm the, it, the, yeah. the silver wave, they're calling it. That was probably the first yeah. column I wrote was, it was called the silver wave about how all the baby boomers are, you know, all going to be getting old at the same time. And, you know, one of our reporters at the Eagle has done a lot of in-depth stories about the the just awful conditions at nursing homes and yeah. you know yeah um you need to have an advocate when you're in one you know you need to have someone mm. to to check on them because there just is no there's just not enough people i mean i i got a look inside um and you know they're overworked they're underpaid it's it's just it's just a real tragedy um, I mean, that, you know, and unfortunately, drugs are like just keeping people. It's not. I mean, talking to my grandmother who died at ninety nine, um, she was in a nursing home, and she was like, "They don't encourage you to get better. They just think of you as, you know, 
drug like consumer. You're, you're on your way out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you're, yeah. You're a consumer. You're on your way out. I mean, even with, yeah. um, yeah, you know, with, with rehab, you know, they would, I guess, me Medicare, Medicaid would be like, yeah, well, that we've decided that, you know, rehab's not really going to do much of anything. So, right. Like, There's yeah. a giving up on giving up muscle. Mm. Yeah. 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 And sedating because it's more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. No, I mean, at some point, I suppose you do have to give up, but, um, you know, it, it just seems like it's just our system is broken, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, you know, but I, I think the other thing, too, is I think you're going to see more people taking care of their parents at home or trying to at least because um, because they don't want to have to put them in a nursing home and, and deal with that. I mean, and the hard thing, too, is I know when my mom was in a nursing home, I had no other choice. I had to work. I, I mean, and the whole time I was like trying to find a way to get her out. And that's, you know, ultimately what happened. I was able to get her out, but it wasn't easy. So, um, yeah, older people become invisible. It is so true. Well, you did a yeah. heroic job. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing this very intimate um, experience with us. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being here. And um, that, that's it. <laughs> okay. I'm I've said it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I'm turning off the recording. Mm -hmm.